Hello, and welcome to Tea in Tales with Thorn, the series where I implore you to join me in reading a short story with a warm cup of tea. Today's tea is rosehip tea. It is a herbal tea made from the pseudo fruits of the rose plant. It has a delicate, floral flavour that is slightly sweet with a distinct aftertaste. Rosehip, unlike other teas such as black teas, is caffeine free and is commonly associated with health benefits, most specifically skin benefits. Rosehip tea is a global tea, not entirely being restricted to a single region as the rose flower is present globally. The wild dog rosebush belongs to the apple family and ranges from 1 to 5 meters in height, presenting a greenish stem with thorns, serrated bright green leaves and beautiful light pink flowers. Rose hips are the reddish coloured oval pods that form once the petals fall off. It is inside these pods that the rose seeds reside. The hips, or haws as they are sometimes called, begin to develop in spring and then ripen by the end of summer or autumn. Both leaves and petals can be used to make healthy herbal teas, but the rose hip is indeed the richest part of the plant. Though they have a meaty appearance, unlike their apple cousins, the rose hips do not have flesh beneath their skins. Instead, rose hips contain tiny seeds covered with silky hairs, being the skin of the hip the most nutritious part. If you have this tea on you or with you, please take the time now to pause and brew yourself a cup, loose or bagged. Today's story is actually a poem, a poem written by Simon Armitage called Chainsaw vs the Pampas Grass. It seemed an unlikely match, all winter unplugged, grinding its teeth in a plastic sleeve. The chainsaw swung nose down from a hook in the dark room under the hatch in the floor. When offered the can, it knocked back a quarter pint of engine oil and juices ran from its joints and threads, oozed across the guide bar and the maker's name into the dry links. From the summer house, still holding one last gulp of last year's heat behind its double doors, and hung with the weightless wreckage of wasps and flies, mothballed in spiders' wool. From there, I trailed the dayglow orange power line, the length of the lawn and the garden path, fed it out like powder from a keg, then walked back to the socket and flicked the switch, then walked again and coupled the saw to the flex, clipped them together then dropped the safety catch and gunned the trigger. No gearing up or getting to speeds, just an instant rage, the rush of metal lashing outer air, connected to the main. The chainsaw with its perfect disregard, its mood to tangle with cloth or jewellery or hair. The chainsaw with its bloody desire, its sweet tooth for the flesh of the face and bones underneath. Its grand plan to kick back against nail or not, and rear up into the brain. I let it flare, lifted it into the sun, and felt the hundred beats per second drumming in its heart, and felt the drive wheel gargle in its throat. The pampas grass with its ludicrous feathers and plumes, the pampas grass taking the warmth and light from cuttings and bulbs, sunning itself, stealing the show with its footstools, cushions and tufts, and its twelve-foot spears. This was the sledgehammer taken to crack the nut. Probably all that was needed here was a good pull or shove, or a pitchfork to lever it out at its base. Overkill. I touched the blur of the blade against the nearmost tip of a reed. It didn't exist. I dabbed at a stalk that swooned, docked a couple of heads, dismissed the top third of its canes with a sideways sweep at shoulder height. This was a game. I lifted the fringe of undergrowth, carved at the trunk. Plant juice spat from the pipes and tubes, and dust flew out as I ripped into the pockets of dark, secret warmth. To clear a space to work, I raked whatever was severed or felled or torn towards the dead zone under the outhouse wall to be fired. Then cut and raked, cut and raked, until what was left was a flat stump the size of a manhole cover or barrel lid that wouldn't be dug with a spade or pried from the earth. Wanting to finish things off, I took up the saw, and drove it vertically downwards into the upper roots, but the blade became choked with soil or fouled with weeds, 
or what was sliced or split somehow closed and mended behind, like cutting at water or air with a knife. I poured barbecue fluid into the patch and threw in a match. It flamed for a minute, smoked for a minute more, and went out. I left it at that. In the weeks that came, new shoots like asparagus tips sprung up from its nest, and by June, it was riding high in its saddle, wearing a new crown. Corn in Egypt. I looked on from the upstairs window like the midday moon. Back below stairs on its hook, the chainsaw seethed. I left it a year to work back through its man-made dreams to try to forget. The seamless urge to persist was as far as I got.